Hello and welcome to part three of my caliber pairing video series. This is part three where we will be discussing caliber pairing in the 357 Magnum. So a little bit spicier of a round in this episode. And we're going to talk about that. And the two guns that we have in question are the Henry All-Weather Big Boy chambered in 357 Magnum and the Ruger GP100 chambered in 357 Magnum. And this, of course, is the series where we explore caliber pairings, one rifle, one handgun, one caliber. The idea is that if you want to purchase some guns and only stack one caliber that will fit in both a handgun and a rifle, uh, you know, old cowboy style, if you will, like when they used to carry a rifle and a revolver that and 45 Colt or something of that nature, the idea is that we're going to stack one ammunition and it's extra spicy this week with the 357 magnum this particular 357 all-weather henry big boy rifle is the original variant there is no side loading gate would i prefer to have a side loading gate uh yes i would but i bought this way before henry came out with the side loading gates uh, it's got a bare tooth products riser here to get a um higher cheek weld to mate up against that or, or at least to pair up against that scope there uh, this is a basic three and nine by 40 scope it's kind of an el cheapo but it works pretty good uh, yeah it is what it is and then we have a custom leather sling here with some eyelets for some rounds and uh we're, it's a nice sling. We're learning to uh, shoot with our sling offhand in a different manner, so I got to figure out how to do that with this one. Uh, but it's a nice sling. So, just to conform with the U of Tubes policy, it is empty. There's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the feed tube. And then we have the Ruger GP100. This is also empty. Nothing in the chamber. This is our handgun in 357 Magnum. It is a stainless GP100 Hogue style rubber grip. Uh, it's got adjustable rear sights, four inch barrel. It is able to fire in single action and double action configurations and is a very accurate and fun to shoot revolver that does get a little spicy with 357. But of course, it can also shoot 38 Special, as can the rifle. So those are the basic features of the rifle and the handgun. And so now we're going to go ahead and verify the speed and velocity difference between the rifle and the handgun. Of course, we expect much higher velocity out of the rifle as compared to the handgun with that longer barrel length. Now, in the first couple of videos, we saw a couple hundred feet per second between the rifle and the handgun variants in both 9mm and 22 long rifle. I think in 357 you're going to find that there's a little bit difference, a little bit more of a vast difference between the two velocities in this spicy round. So check this out. Duh. 2103. Twenty one thirty three. Twenty one thirty four. Twenty one twenty three. So averaging twenty one hundred. So let's see how that same mag tech one hundred twenty five grain does in the Ruger GP 100. All right, here we go. It's going to be spicy. Hmm. 1462 at chronographs rocking 1424 so as you can see uh the rifle had upwards of 2100 feet per second 2100 feet per second so pretty fast moving for a 
what's considered a handgun round, and then coming in between 14 and 1500 feet per second on average in that Ruger GP100, needless to say, not only are we getting some fantastic velocities out of the 357 Magnum, but also a tremendously vast difference in speed between the rifle and handgun variants, making the 357 Magnum a pretty heavy contender as far as what it can do as a round. Now again, the caveat is, is that you should seek out somebody with experience for training on martial or self-defense use. But this is just bare raw data showing you the difference in caliber pairings between a rifle and handgun variant. So uh, to add on to it this week, we went ahead and being this being a little bit more of a special rifle in as far as its intended niche use, I decided to verify the zero on it this week. So we went ahead and got down in the prone position and took some shots at 25 yards just to verify the rifle's zero. So, and another thing too, you can see from the slow motion um, actual footage of this in this first round that I shoot prone that the 357 is such a powerful spicy round, you can see it going off and the actual reverberations going through my body from front to back because of the power of this round. And after that, you can see on the left target at 25 yards that the 25 yard zero is still pretty dead on. So what we're going to do is we're going to ship to the target on the right and take off four more shots just to verify that 25 yard zero. So there you have it, chronography showing the actual velocity of the bullets being vastly different in the 357 rifle versus the handgun. So just give you a close-up look at this handgun. It is just a beautiful handgun. This was, of course, my first handgun that I bought. Oh, man, it must have been 2010 when I lived in a cinder, little cinder block slum lord apartment in Rock Island, Illinois, just because of the seedy characters that were about... So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at this caliber pairing, 357 Magnum, the third part in my series on caliber pairings between a rifle and a handgun. One rifle, one handgun, one caliber. So I hope you enjoyed that and just remember to stay prepared because the more Americans that are prepared, the more there's a future for America.